guys, so today I thought I should do a response video to a video that I made in the past. It's been almost a year since I did the Best Pets for Kids video, and I get a lot of comments on that video, so I thought today would be a good day to try to give a response to all of the comments that I get on that video. So first of all, there really is no such thing as a good pet or a bad pet. The perfect pet for one person is the worst pet for another person. And that's because it all depends on what the person wants out of a pet. It depends on work schedule, income, lifestyle, and a lot of other things. I get asked a lot if a certain type of animal is a good pet. For example, people will ask me, are chinchillas good pets? And that isn't a yes or no answer. So the answer to that question is actually a series of several questions. It's, do you have a big budget for a pet? Can you commit the next 15 years of your life to that pet? And are you willing to keep your house at a low temperature all year long? And there's many more questions besides just those. So if I don't know someone, I really can't answer that question for them. If they ask me, is a rabbit a good pet? Is a chinchilla a good pet? If I don't know them, I don't know if it's a good pet for them. So the best pets for kids video was to give parents and kids options of low budget pets with somewhat easy care requirements. And I constantly get questions about animals that were not featured in that video. So when I made the list of animals that I was gonna use for that video, there were three requirements. One, that they were affordable. Two, that they had somewhat easy care requirements. And three, that most people would not be afraid of them. I'm gonna talk about the most common ones and why they were not featured in that video. And you might be a kid and you might have one of these animals as a pet. So you just have to remember that there are always exceptions to this and not everybody is the same. There's no reason to be offended if you do have one of these animals as a pet. Some people can take care of them just fine, but I'm gonna explain why in general I didn't recommend these types of animals for kids. The first one that we're gonna talk about is fish. There are so many comments on that video as to why I didn't include fish. And quite honestly, fish are some of the most complex animals to care for in captivity. It's not so much that fish are super difficult to take care of, it's that you have to really understand their environmental needs. And really the only people that say that fish are easy pets are people that don't know anything about fish. The parents should always be involved with the care that the animal is receiving. However, in the case of fish, the parent is really gonna be the person doing all of the work. You cannot get just a bowl of water and stick a goldfish in it. That is why it is so common to hear, oh, my pet goldfish died. Very often, fish do not live their entire life expectancy because people just don't take care of them correctly. Goldfish are considered one of the easier types of fish to care for. However, goldfish really should be in a 40 gallon tank, which is a pretty big size tank, whereas most people wanna put some goldfish in a 10 gallon tank. So when caring for your fish, you need to think about temperature, ammonia level, oxygen level, getting your water tested. Those are just some of the things that go along with caring for fish that most people don't think about. Disease spreads very quickly in water. So if one of the fish comes in sick, all of the rest of the fish are gonna get sick and need to be treated as well. And something as subtle as adding the wrong temperature of water to the tank when you decrease it 10% will kill all of your fish. So once you understand everything that goes into caring for fish, it's really not that hard to do, but there's just so many things that most people don't think about. So if you are looking for an easy pet to care for, fish are not it. And sometimes people want to know why I didn't include horses in that video because horses are great pets as well. And they are. In fact, kids get so many benefits both mentally and physically when they ride horses. But I do not recommend families who have no experience with horses to buy a horse for their kid. For people who do have horses, they're probably already including their kids. But for people who do not have experience with horses, buying their kid a horse is usually a mistake. If a kid really wants a horse, the parents should take the kid for riding lessons. And here are a couple of reasons why. 
they may really put effort into their lessons or they may just decide that it is too much work. Usually people who end up buying a horse that don't have any experience with horses usually end up getting a horse that is not right for them. And this can actually cause for them to be afraid of horses for the rest of their life. I've seen it happen. Horses are a huge expense and there's different options that you can take before diving headfirst into it. Riding lessons and leasing are good places to start. If you cannot communicate with your horse, your horse is not going to understand what you want from it. So you really need to work with a trainer to understand how to communicate with your horse in order to have a good relationship with your horse. And then there are parrots. I would never recommend a parrot for a kid. Parrots are not good pets for most people. They are wonderful animals, but they are expensive and they are demanding. Parrots live a really long time. Some species live about 30 years, while as others can live about 70 or 80 years. So it's a pretty big commitment. And based on statistics, many parrots are actually rehomed about three times during their life. And parrots should really never be rehomed. They form a bond with their owner that when they are rehomed, they really do feel abandoned. If you want to learn more about parrots and finding out if they are the right pet for you, you can watch this video here. And then there are people that want to get a mini pig for their family. So the first thing to understand with mini pigs is that there is no such thing as a 20 pound healthy mini pig that is full grown. A mini pig is actually anything that is under 300 pounds, which is a very important thing to understand. A 50 pound mini pig is possible. However, 70 pounds is going to be more common. And quite honestly, most mini pigs will actually get over 100 pounds. And please, at this point, don't start thinking, oh, well, I'll get a teacup pig instead or a micro mini. Teacup pigs, micro minis, mini pigs, all of those are the same thing. They just use different names in order to try to sell the pig. However, even if you buy a teacup pig from a breeder, that pig is not going to stay 20 pounds. There's really just no way that a pig can be really anything less than about 45 pounds when fully grown. Anything smaller than that is just not possible. Second thing to understand is that pigs are really not recommended for families with young children. Pigs are constantly testing the hierarchy and they will push around small kids and even bite them to get what they want. So if you do have a pig and you do have small children, you have to be really careful and put a lot of effort into training. Pigs are extremely intelligent and it's also like having a toddler. They also hate change and just like parrots, they're another pet that becomes extremely depressed when rehomed. And they're also a pet that is often rehomed because so many people still think that it is possible to get a very, very small pig. Okay, so let's talk about chinchillas. There are a couple of reasons why I did not put chinchillas on the list. Chinchillas are expensive. They are expensive to buy and they are also expensive to maintain. And chinchillas are pretty delicate. Rabbits and guinea pigs are also animals that are delicate, just as any small animal will be, but those animals are comfortable in a room temperature. However, chinchillas need to be kept at a colder temperature. So besides being expensive to buy and expensive to maintain, they can also make your electricity bill be pretty expensive as well. Chinchillas cannot have a lot of treats like veggies, which are easily accessible. They need stuff like dried flowers and things like that that are just harder to find and therefore more expensive. So all of these things might not make them a suitable pet for most families. And then there are turtles and tortoises. So many people think that turtles are easy pets to take care of, which is why so many suffer from health problems in captivity. They require a lot of space and they require certain humidity levels which can actually change with age and they also require special heating and lighting. They also require special diet which depends on the species and only in captivity do turtles suffer from pyramiding and pyramiding is a deformality of their shell. So overall I do not recommend turtles or tortoises as pets for kids. If you want to have one you need to do a lot of research on them. Okay so moving on why did I not mention snakes? 
Well, corn snakes and ball pythons, which are usually the most common ones, I do not think are good pets for kids. And let me start off again by saying that with any pet, the parents should be very involved with the care. And let's face it, so many people are afraid of snakes. And people like myself do a lot of effort to try to educate the public and get them away from that fear of snakes. However, it is still there and we need to recognize that it is. And if parents are afraid of the pet that their children have, the pet is going to suffer because of that. So I don't recommend for kids to have a pet that their parents are afraid of. The pet is going to suffer with the care that it receives. And if the parents really do like snakes and that's what they're into, they're already going to know what snakes the kids should be able to handle so that they can be involved as well. So going back to why I don't recommend corn snakes and ball pythons, corn snakes can actually be pretty difficult for a kid to hold. And ball pythons are very much known for refusing to eat, which can cause a lot of problems. Ball pythons will stop eating simply because you moved their cage from one side of the room to the other side. A lot of people say that snakes are easy pets to take care of. And well, their care can be pretty simple, but knowing how to actually handle them and knowing what to do when they refuse to eat is a completely different story. So I don't recommend snakes for kids unless the parents have experience and can and definitely help them with every issue that comes up. Sugar gliders are pets that I do not recommend as a kid's first pet. Exotics in general do not make good pets for families because they are very expensive to obtain and they also do not have easy care requirements. You cannot get a bag of food from the store for the sugar gliders. You actually have to make their own food and their diets are pretty complex. And sugar gliders are not cheap animals to buy. An animal that actually can make a good pet for kids that I did not mention in the last video are hermit crabs. Hermit crabs are cheap and they're not really too difficult to care for. However, I left them off the list last time because I felt that there was too many misconceptions about hermit crabs. Most cages and products that pet stores have for hermit crabs are actually not suitable for them. And when you look up information about hermit crabs, usually care sheets do not even have the humidity level that hermit crabs require, which is super important. But once you do learn how to correctly care for them, it's really not too difficult. And if you want to learn more about hermit crabs and how to care for them properly, you can watch this video here. Another reason is that hermit crabs are captured from the wild. They are not bred in captivity and some people might not be comfortable with this. I have hermit crabs because people give them to me, so that's how I got mine. Small birds are usually not great pets for kids. Small birds do not like handling and they are very delicate. You cannot light candles around them. You have to use safe cookware in your house and you have to be very careful of what types of sprays you use around them. And besides all of that, they can actually be pretty expensive to obtain. Birds also make a huge mess, and I am convinced that the smaller the bird is, the bigger of a mess that it creates. It's just gonna be feathers, bird poop, and seeds everywhere. And then sometimes I get a question of why didn't I say a duck or a goat, and it just doesn't make sense for me to recommend an animal that people cannot keep in a residential neighborhood. Some of the animals that I did mention, such as hedgehogs, are not legal in all states. However, that just kind of depends on where you live, whereas almost all cities do have zoning laws for farm animals. So it can be harder for people to obtain those animals and to legally keep them, whereas even boarding a horse is pretty common. So there are still lots of different types of pets that I did not cover in this video or the other one. But the point was to talk about the most common types of pets that people get. I didn't mention leopard geckos last time just because their tail falling off is a con and the same thing goes for crested geckos. However, I also did consider that there's a lot of misconceptions that crested geckos do not need to eat live food and they do need to be fed live food such as crickets on a regular basis. So all of the pets that I mentioned can make good pets for some people but they are more expensive and their care requirements are a little bit more difficult 
than the pets in the other video. So I hope that answers some questions for you and also makes you think twice about certain types of animals. If you have questions, you can leave them in the comments down below. And you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please subscribe so that you can get more animal videos. I put out a new video every week. See you guys next time.